Hi, I'm Julie, and this is a general biology video about eukaryotic cells. So there are two types of cells. First is prokaryotic cells. We know that prokaryotic cells belong to let me get my uh, my pen going here. Okay, so um, there are two domains that have prokaryotic cells. There's the bacteria and the archaea. And they are single celled organisms. And they are called prokaryotes. Okay, so this video is going to be about the second type, eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells, the domain eukarya has eukaryotic cells. So um, the groups in eukarya would be plants, animals, fungi, and protists. You probably recognize plants, animals, and fungi. Protists, examples of protists would be amoebas, algae, slime molds, yeast. So protists are single-celled organisms. But unlike prokaryotes, they have a nucleus. So eukaryotic cells all have nucleus in the cell. So they all have a nucleus, whereas the prokaryotic cells do not have a membrane-bound nucleus. So there are single-celled protists that behave a lot like fungi, like slime molds and yeast. There are protists, single-celled plants, and those are called algae. And protists, there are also single-celled animals, like amoebas, that are called protists. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is we are going to tour the eukaryotic cell. So there is a process where a molecule, such as a protein, can be labeled and then injected into a cell. And then you can watch the protein, see where it goes, what does it do, so we can figure out what's going on inside of a cell. So, a eukaryotic cell not only has a nucleus, a membrane-bound nucleus, but it also has membrane-bound organelles. These, this drawing is of an animal cell over here and a plant cell over here, and all of these inside, they're all organelles. Organelles are membrane bound, they have membranes, and they each have a specific function. So um, just like, I kind of think of it like your organs inside your body, they each have a specific function, do a specific job. Well so do organelles in, inside the cell. So uh, nucleus, membrane bound organelles, each Per, um, let's see, performing a specific function. Okay, and oh, so I also wanted to mention that eukaryotic cells tend to be larger than prokaryotic cells, and that's because of these organelles, because it's car compartmentalized inside of the cell, so that 
it's um, with these organelles it's much more efficient to be able to get the nutrients that it needs across that cell membrane and much more efficient to be able to get rid of the waste that it needs because all of these organelles are doing the job much more efficiently. Okay, so let's do our tour of the cell. So this drawing is kind of fun, it's colorful, it's kind of neat. You can see all the organelles easily, but you really can't see what they're doing. There is a video made by Harvard University called Life of the Cell. And it really makes it easy to see what's going on in the cell, that there's movement going on. Things are moving around inside there and doing their job. This picture uh, is one of my favorites. And it's kind of interesting. What you can see in this picture right here, um, let's see, so let's get a pen. So this structure right here is part of the cytoskeleton, the skeleton of the cell, which helps, helps it to keep its shape. But it also performs another function. It's a track. And it's a track for this, what's called a motor protein. And so if you've got your cytoskeleton right there, your motor protein is actually motoring around on this track, pulling this organelle with it, pulling it around inside the cell. So that's why the cell, a eukaryotic cell, is so much more efficient. Okay, so let's take a look at our cell. So Proteins are important in a cell. They're the tools inside the cell to be able to do all the things that need to be done inside there. So uh, the protein will get made, but first we need a recipe to make that protein. That recipe comes from here inside the nucleus. So I'm going to say this is the nucleus. Yes. There's a U. New, there's a C, oh boy. Ah, let's try that again. Okay, nucleus. Okay, and inside there, there are molecules called DNA molecules, and they hold the code, the recipe to make the proteins. But DNA likes to stay safe inside this nucleus. So it doesn't leave the nucleus, but the proteins are made outside, out here. So inside the nucleus, another molecule is made, and it's a messenger molecule that takes that code outside the nucleus, and that's called an RNA molecule. It's actually an mRNA because it's a messenger. So DNA is in the nucleus. A, another molecule called an mRNA is transcribed and that's the one that leaves out of these nuclear pores and that RNA then goes floats around floats around floats around floats around until it finds these structures right here which are called ribosomes and there's also ribosomes over here on this structure called the endoplasmic reticulum. I'm just going to go ahead and put an abbreviation for ER. I'm just going to call it ER. So endoplasmic reticulum. So these ribosomes right here, so the mRNA floats around, floats around, floats around until it hits a ribosome. And then a protein is made. It's a chain, a chain of amino acids. And that chain then goes inside the ER and it gets folded. It gets folded up into the three-dimensional structure, kind of like a tool. It makes a tool. 
And then that tool, that protein tool, then gets put inside a transport vesicle. Oops, vesicle. And gets transported to this structure over here, which is called the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. Over here, this is also an ER, but this is called a smooth ER because there's no ribosomes. This one is called the rough ER because it has the ribosomes. So our protein gets transported to the Golgi apparatus. Over here, the smooth ER makes lipids. And lipids, again, get put into this transport vesicle and floats around, floats around, floats around, floats around until it gets transported to the Golgi apparatus. And then inside the Golgi apparatus, the Golgi apparatus packages up the lipids and the proteins, bonds them together if they need to, and then puts them, the Golgi apparatus puts them into another vesicle, transportation vesicle. And it can transport it to an organelle, or it can even transport it outside of the cell. So this takes, this making of the proteins takes a lot of energy. So in the next video, we are going to talk more about the mitochondria and how the energy is made uh, to be able to make those proteins. Okay. I hope you found that interesting. I'm going to turn it off.